So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here today. So, yep, I think we have got uh, quite a couple, um, about half of our participants who have joined us already. So I think right now I'd like to hand over the mic to Ms. Ni uh, Liana, and then uh, she can be, she can welcome you and then uh, she can share with you information. Over to you, Liana. Hey, thank you so much, Ada. So uh, once again, a very good afternoon to everyone, uh, members, our valued partners, our friends. You know, I hope you had a good lunch. Um, again, I'm Liana from Singapore Logistics Association. So on behalf of SLA and D3 is Private Limited, um, I would like to extend our warmest welcome to all of you and thank you for joining us today. Uh, I'm not sure if it's raining from your side, but actually it's raining very heavily at my side. And I'm so happy that you're here instead of your bed. Uh, in addition, we also want to give a special thanks to our SLA member, NMP International Fits Private Limited, uh, one of our longer, one of our long-serving members of SLA, who we'll share a bit later on. So um, the whole session will take about um, one hour or less. Um, as you can see, we are recording it because um, some of uh, some of our members are actually saying that they actually want uh, to to view the recording for those who actually can't attend uh, today's session. So um, if, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to type in your questions at the chat button. Uh, alternatively, you can raise your virtual hand, unmute yourself, and you can ask questions directly. Um, so without further ado, I would like to invite uh, another long-serving person of SLA, uh, Mr. Jerry Tan. He's actually the honorary secretary of SLA to give his warm uh, to give his welcome remarks. Uh, Jerry, please over to you. Thank you. Hi everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jerry. So uh, there has been much uh, emphasis on digital transformation to enable enterprises deliver greater value to customers, retain a competitive advantage uh, and increase opportunities for growth. Enterprises uh, across all industries have applied different types of automation and digital technologies to change operational processes, customer relationships and uh, many more. Two of such uh, technologies that have created some excitement in their ability to support digital transformation by driving productivity, efficiency, customer satisfaction gains, are robotic process automation, short RPA, and also artificial intelligence, AI. Now, when these two technologies are somehow integrated, they bring about intelligent automation that enable rapid end-to-end -end business processes. Within the SLA, some of our work can be typically mundane and uh, repetitive. With the advent of uh, RPA, we realized that we could automate much of our manual operational tasks and processes. So we decided to adopt RPA to work on one of our tasks, which is actually our annual membership renewal for year 2021. Now, through a collaboration with Glen, with Glee Trees, a local tech startup, they offered their proprietary software called Gleematic to SLA. And uh, they also volunteered their team's time to build a script to automate the steps that Glen needs to do. Now, Glen is the name uh, affectionately given uh, to this board. Now, a script, uh, you may ask, uh, what is it now? A script is actually a set of instructions for the software robot to follow so that it can complete the process uh, on a computer. The robot mimics a human's action by assessing uh, our SLA's membership management system, uh, such as the uh, member's profile, downloading the member's text invoices for membership renewal, attach it then on an email and uh, type out customized messages in, in Microsoft Outlook and then dispatch emails to respective recipients without any human intervention. In the past, members have reacted somewhat negatively to our uh, renewal emails because they were either not received or sent to their spam mails because of a third party email communication uh, software. Now with RPA on board, members are receiving emails without any hassle 
And moreover, the task of having to resend emails manually or making follow-up phone calls are simply things of the past. Through this technological uh, intervention, SLA has also shown that digital transformation did not have to be an org organization-wide change, but rather it's about really working with a series of small, bite-sized projects that can offer positive business outcomes. We know that taking th this first step towards digital transformation is never easy. But the good news is that you don't have to travel this journey alone. We in the SLA team are here to help address your needs in your digital transformation journey. And uh, through our collaborative efforts and cross industry exchanges with our key partners. So feel free to talk to us uh, after this webinar. Over to you, uh, Liana. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Jerry. Um, in case you're wondering, uh, Glenn is not working now. He is just a robot. Okay. So next, I would like to invite um, again uh, back to Miss uh, Ada Lim. She is uh, the co-founder of uh, Glee Trees uh, Private Limited, who will share the basic concepts of AI and RPA, how these technologies can help you, your organization, on how to uh, how to instruct your glimatic robot. Uh, how AI and RPA can automate some logistics function, such as uh, inventory management, uh, coordinating deliveries and updates, predicting arrivals using historical data, etc. So, uh, Edda, over to you, please. Thank you. Thank you, Liana. Thank you, Mr. Jerry Tan, for your sharing as well. Yeah, excited to be here today. Okay, so I mean, uh, it's also a pleasant surprise that uh, so many people showed interest in this topic. So yeah, uh, with that, I'd like to share my screen uh, to you know, like uh, basically share with the audience here. So what is RPA about? How can AI help you? And then you know, like uh, how you can make use of all these uh, to basically have an automation in your organization. Okay. So yes, welcome. So I'm going to share with you a brief outline of our seminar or the webinar today. So we have had an address from Mr. Jerry Tan. And then, um, yeah, so thank you for sharing also about how SLA is using the robot, uh, Glenn, uh, which, which is taking a rest now. And then, yeah, we I'm going to go into a brief intro about RPA and AI, robotic process automation. We don't have a walking, talking robot. It is actually a software that sits in your computer. And then after that, we'd like to welcome Ms. Melissa Ong from uh, NMP Freight to come and join us. Yeah, okay. So with that, let me just move on. Uh, so you know about automation already. Automation has been happening for a long time, but mostly in the office. So automation has come to, you know, it's like, uh, um, uh, sorry, <laughs> automation has been happening in factories. Yeah, now the automation has come to offices. And then, you know, like you have got a box like Glenn, who is able to do the office work or administrative work for you. So our government, IMDA, you know, government body IMDA, they did a study and then a survey. And these are the responses that, uh, um, that they got from the survey. Why? go for digital why automate so one thing is that the first part is that you know it can help you to increase performance number two is deeper focus on innovation so you can get you know uh, basically more ideas for doing things in a better faster way and then there's more value creation that total enterprise value will be growing as well so a bit wordy here but um, let me just briefly go through that why you have to why is it digitalization necessary? Why is automation necessary? Because if you are not doing it, competitors are doing it. So they'll be ahead of you if you're not in the digital game. And our customers are getting more digitally savvy. They will be asking for it. Another part is that regulations are also evolving and a lot of things need to be done digitally these days. So the, the next portion is that, uh, you know, be prepared against the headwinds, and then we need to future-proof your business. So hope all this automation and digitalization will help you to get things done better, faster, more efficiently, more effectively. So what are we trying to do? <laughs> this is, okay, this is a picture of a typical office as we sometimes see. 
lots of paper documents, you know, lots of manual tasks. There is a lot of time spent on doing administrative work. We are planning to turn that into something like this, whereby, you know, you will have a efficient, clean, neat office and efficient processes whereby you can get things done automatically. So I said join forces with the boss. Brief intro of what is robotic process automation. As I mentioned, these are not walking, talking bots. They can't really shake hands with you, but they are actually a software that can actually mimic humans. So that means that it can control other software. So it is not your ERP system or your WMS system, but it is like a digital worker that will help you to control the various software and information files. Best of all, you can control and give instructions to this bot to do what you want to do. Some examples, it can possibly recognize your screen images, open your software applications. It can make decisions, say you can have some logic. It is flexible and easy to customize because the good thing about RPA is that, as, at least for our tool, it does not require you to know any programming code. So what is robotic process automation or RPA good for? If you have got large volumes of repetitive tasks that are manual, and then you have uh, involved um, structured digital data that say, for example, comes from spreadsheets in your systems, your WMS system, ERP systems, etc. And there's a logical flow, then it will be a good candidate. That process will be a good candidate for automation with RPA. So with that, let me just share with you a brief demo of how the RPA bot can move data from Excel or into systems. Okay, just very briefly. Okay, so this is the process flow. We are going to get data from an Excel spreadsheet into online form. What are the potential applications? You know, it's like uh, you can be doing declarations, you can be filling up order forms, you can be, you know, it's like uh, um, submitting information for reporting, etc. So what you need to do is that you just have to prepare the information in an Excel file. Okay. After that, you can actually teach the robot how to go to that particular destination that you want to go. It could be, you know, your um, PSA site or, you know, Jerome Port site or whatsoever. So we're going to show you a sample here. So this is a script. So like what Mr. Jerry Tan said, a script is a, just a set of instructions for the robot to follow. So after that, the bot will be able to go in and then the bot will pick up data and then the bot will be able to open up okay, the web portal and fill in the information. And it can also let you know that what has been done. So with that, it can repeatedly do tasks without you having to even monitor. The bot can let you know if it has encountered any problems and then you can be there to be the, you know, the checker or guide the robot. Okay, so. How about systems, right? You probably might be asking, hey, you know, I've got data from not just Excel, but maybe you've got data in systems that you need to transfer to another system or maybe, you know, say the, as mentioned earlier, so government portals, etc. So what is going to happen is that you just have to teach the bot where to get the data from, where to put it into. So over here, what the bot is doing is that the bot is going to open up a system called the CRM, the Customer Relationship Management System, and then also an accounting system. So this demo will show how we are going to detect you know, data about a customer to check whether you know, the data in system A does it reside in system B. So the bot is currently going in, okay, uh, if you might be wondering uh, how do we get the robot to log in, etc. A few ways, you know, you can let the robot know your password that can be encrypted or you can get the bot to stop 
while human fill in the registration or the login. And after that, the robot can continue. So the bot goes to one system, which is the accounting system, checks the info. Okay, then after that, it goes to look at another another record because it says, hey, Ada Lim is already inside the system. So let's check another person. Okay, so the bot is going to check another person's profile and try to see whether does it reside in the other system. Okay, now it sees that, uh, oh, there is no such person's record in this CRM. Then it will start to open up a form to fill up the data about this person. You will see that the bot can handle pop-up windows. It goes to field by field to copy the data, kind of like put it in its temporary memory. And then subsequently, it is going to go and create a new record and fill up the information over here. So if you need an admin assistant, you can actually hire this bot to help you with all these tasks. Okay, so now it checks that, uh, oh, is there Andre Go here already? Yes, then the robot knows that it has completed its task. Okay, so let me move on. Back to our slides. You might be wondering, hey, you know, sometimes the data doesn't just sit in Excel files, that it doesn't sit in, you know, a system. We get documents, right? You might get scans of uh, information uh, documents such as your order forms, delivery notes, you know, it's like uh, um, CUA bills, LA bills, stacking list, etc. So what is there to be done? We call these uh, semi-structured or unstructured data, you know, invoices, contracts, images, etc. Then we need the help of AI or artificial intelligence. AI to the rescue. What does the AI do? Okay, basically it's a field of study where machines can think and make decisions. So it is not as smart as you, I hope it never will be, but what it can do is that it can help you to do some kind of uh, information processing or image processing without having to give very clear and structured instructions. Okay, so what are the different categories of AI? We've got uh, image recognition. It's a, it's a branch of AI whereby the robots are able to, you know, the machines are able to understand images. So how does it learn? Basically, you have to show multiple examples. Say, for example, you want to let it recognize a bow. Then you might have to show multiple samples of bows to let the machine learn. Okay. Likewise, if you wanted to recognize, you know, say your um, handbag or a kind of cup, etc., you will have to give the machine multiple samples. It's just like, you know, trying to teach a toddler who's learning how to talk. Teach them a cup or a ball. You will show that maybe, you know, say a uh, something that is round or maybe even oblong and different colored items could be ball. Sphere, spherical ball, oblong balls, etc., could be balls, yeah? So this is one category of AI for image recognition. The other one is called natural language processing. So the bots are trying to understand human language. So this NLP, it means that, uh, you know, it's trying to see how humans put words together to mean certain things. Because we are very flexible, right? Humans, we are very diverse and dynamic. We can say approval in different ways. One person might say, you know, go ahead. Maybe Liana might say, oh, good. Maybe Mr. Jerry Tan might say, no problem at all. So all this means approval, but to robots, they need to learn that uh, all these are in the same category called approvals. So this is a part whereby we can teach the bot natural language. It can be in English, just now the examples I give you are in English. You know, it can also be trained to understand other languages like Chinese, Bahasa, etc. So in all these examples, just now for the machine as well as in the um, in machine for the images plus the, the part about the um, you know, language, it all involves machine learning. It just means that uh, it is, the bot is learning based on large volumes of data fed to them. So what are the benefits of what 
white collar robots or workers like Glenn? What can you expect of them? The one thing is that they will definitely be a lot faster, you know, because the bots can actually type three to five times faster, can enter information. I would say about two times the fast, as fast as uh, um, doing, you know, like uh, the typical IT overhaul because you don't have to do programming, you don't have to change anything. I think it can even be more than that. You know, it's like maybe if you need to change your systems, it might take, uh, say, six months to a year. But an RPA project, you know, you can check with the SLA also. Maybe it can even, a small one can even be done in a matter of weeks, maybe two weeks, and you can get some automation done and to relieve you of the mundane repetitive task. The third portion is that uh, there, there could be significant cost reduction. You know, cost reduction, not just from the um the the labor hours but also in terms of the i would say cost reductions in terms of compliance because we have some customers who say mistakes could be very costly why because they might get slapped with a fine you know for making mistakes or declaring goods in the wrong category yeah so and then you can see the quick roi within weeks you can actually see that there is some result of your automation efforts already so what about logistics? You know, what are some of the use cases in logistics? Let me share that with you. One, just now as I have mentioned, you could use the bot to do declarations or entering forms on websites. When goods arrive, you can actually use the AI to classify, enter the container's information or update this data. Just now, like what Liana mentioned, uh, later I will show you about some predictive analysis. You can also even predict, you know, it's like an arrival, you know, the estimated time of arrival or that whether certain types of goods going through certain routes can arrive on time or not. Okay, so you can also do this one. This one is actually one of the processes that we have implemented in a customer. So basically, um, this is order order management also so it's like let's say the human receive a call okay then someone someone is going to send in the booking request so what the human has to do is just create an excel file and then the robot will pick up info from the excel file and then create an order form inside your system after that the bot can email the booking confirmation okay then after which the shipper can receive the booking confirmation and then can print out and um, well, can auto update the booking on the government portal as well. Yeah. So if you send the information to a freight forwarder, etc., you can receive the BL and then after that print it out. Okay. So the bot can handle, you know, it's like an email clients can handle scanned documents. It can handle, you know, uh, basically sent to printer etc just the only thing is that it cannot pick up and fold it for you to be mailed out <laughs> yeah because it is not a physical robot okay so one more example it could be potentially used for your inventory management whereby you have uh, goods moving out and bot can have a record of the movement of goods okay then you can the bot can actually alert the human when the inventory runs low update the system Okay, so when the inventory runs low, the bot can also help you to say maybe uh, make a new order to replenish the inventory. Okay, then after that, it can say that, uh, um, of course, the physical goods has to be received by the humans. After that, it can actually feed the uh, goods received document to the bot again, and the bot will actually update the system so that a lot of these parts can be automated. So this is um, also something that we have implemented in one of our clients. Okay, you might be wondering, hey, so how do you know that uh, um, the information inside can go into a system? So we, I'm going to show you how we can pick up data from some of the complex documents like a contract. So again, no coding. This is largely NLP or natural language processing and, and uh, machine learning. So what the machine is going to learn is that it's going to learn the templates of your documents. Okay. So yeah, let me just skip this intro a little bit. So let me go in. 
So what you have to do is that uh, you fit the templates to the bot and you have to do the first time teaching. Okay, so the first time teaching, you show the bot, okay, robot, look here. This is the template of the document. These are the data points I need. This is called date, this is called name, this is called you know, uh, date of birth, etc. So it's like a new intern or a new uh, a worker that you have to teach the robot the first round of what is this document about? What is your process about? And then we can have a so-called a model or a reference point whereby the robot will be you know, saying, um, using to do the data extraction. So after the bot has learned this template, it will be able to extract the data from here. So extracting data from this document, we have got things like, you know, um, salary, the person's name, etc. So we're going to compare the data. So we have got, like, say, for example, name, then, you know, we're going to pick up things like uh, address, position, date of birth, etc. Over here, you saw that this is uh, Tony Albert. Okay, it is a name, etc. Yeah. Okay. So I think subsequently you might be asking hey, what is the accuracy level? Yeah. So I say if it is a, uh, you know, it's like this is a native PDF invoice and the accuracy level could be 99.99%. If they are scanned documents, then I guess it will depend on the quality of the scan and the kind of data that you are trying to pick up. Okay. So this is an example of our data extraction from a contract, all right? Okay, maybe you might be wondering, hey, one of the things is, you know, it's like a payments and receivable, pay, payables and receivables. How can we do that easily? You want to collect money fast, right? And then you also don't want to be spending too much time trying to make payments to your suppliers. So if the data is not computerized yet, you can actually scan this data, then after which the bot will be learning again how to interpret this data. So it can be for accounting, finance, um, any, any organization can use this. Again, we train this bot. We have a model for the reference of the information. Okay, after which is going to go inside. And we run this model together with the script. Okay, so what it's trying to do is that the, the bot will be extracting data from invoice like this. Okay, so you don't have to do one by one. After you have done the training, you can give all the invoices to the robot through a folder. You put all the unprocessed invoices into a folder. Then after that, it will go into this folder and then start to do the processing. So you see that uh, it has processed and it has picked up information like invoice number, purchase order number, description, etc. So the robot can do the follow up. Okay, say that, hey, okay, I want to check it and then you know maybe tally it. So the bot will pick up the information after which it can go in to do the checking It goes to the accounting system, then it tries to check for the purchase order number. With that, it can pick up the information in the PO. It can do that, uh, you know, you can do two-way check, three-way check, etc. You can match against your DO, your delivery order, delivery notes, and your purchase orders as well. And then the bot can subsequently update the system. If you are wondering, oh, um, is this going to be compatible? So basically, RPA is supposed to be compatible with uh, the systems that you are currently using because it does not require, you know, APIs or doesn't require programming connections at the back end. It is just trying to mimic the human's activities and then it is trying to, you know, it's like uh, control the computer as if it is you, as if it is a human. Yeah. Okay. Then the next portion is that uh, we, we are talking about analytics, right? So just now, Yana was mentioning that, uh, you know, we can, the AI can also help to do some predictions. So this example, it shows, it says uh, loan approval, but it can be for almost any use case. So 
what you have to do is that the best thing is that you don't need to know statistics, you don't need to know data science, all you need is your process, your data, after which you train the bot, but you have to let the bot know what variables to consider, of course. Okay, so let the bot know, uh, you know, like, uh, what is important information. So you just feed the database, it's simple CSV file. Okay, you can, you can just define that, okay, th these are the important variables, okay. So for this demo, we are showing, let's like, say, for example, personal loan, then to, to get a personal loan, then, hey, okay, maybe we need to consider the age, job, education, etc. So after that, the bot will be able to make a prediction using the historical data patterns. It says likelihood, no, probability of it being a no is 85%. So with data, you can actually go ahead and do predictions as well. So these are some of the functions that you can use the AI for. Okay, so back to my slides. Uh, what are the considerations when you want to deploy? So number one is the type of process you have. You know, you may have to consider, you know, say, a, does it involve structured digital data? then you don't really, you can do with plain RPA, but if it involves, you know, semi-structured and unstructured data, like your documents, like invoices and all that, uh, then you probably need AI. Okay, the latency means that uh, whether your system, how slow is it, how fast it is, uh, sometimes the systems are slow to respond, then you can't expect the bot to be faster than your, uh, the systems that the bot is trying to assess, yeah. So the second portion, okay, you have alternatives data, I'll share with you what the alternatives are. Okay, the third thing is that, uh, you know, um, you have to consider your budget, your resources, skills and time, of course. And then how much of our transactions you have per unit time. So alternatives, you can actually do programming and integration if you want to process large volumes of data within seconds, but you will need to do complicated programming mode and it could be more costly. So what can we do? Our suggestion is that uh, you will set the overall strategy first, then you have to align, you know, your goals internally. Because if you're not sure what is it that you want to achieve, then maybe you might be struggling a little bit on how to structure the project. Importantly, you have to get the buy-in from the stakeholders. Make sure that the process owners know what you're trying to achieve. And if you are a boss or a manager, then you also have to, you know, like assure your staff or your colleagues that this thing is going to help them and, you know, this uh, robots cannot replace humans, that's for sure, yeah. So the next portion is that uh, you would review processes and then identify where it's a potential because not every so-called boring task can be automated. Like for example, if you want it to be, um, say for example, uh, making decisions about which customer to give discount to, uh, maybe this is the boss's decision, yeah, so probably the robot cannot handle this, okay. Then after, only after that, then you assess the, uh, the types of technologies that are available and you start pilots. Okay, start small and after that, scale up. After which, I would, um, we would definitely recommend an iterative process whereby you review the results of your pilots and then after that, you can evaluate and scale up accordingly. Some do's and don'ts. Do look for a tool to suit your use, not uh, I mean, it's like, you know, buying shoes, right? You don't get branded shoes or a certain kind of uh, cutting of the shoes or clothes just because, say, a celebrity wears it, something like that, you know, it might not suit your budget, but it may not suit your, your, your shape, you know, your kind of feet that you have, yeah? So do test in controlled environment also, yeah? If you are working on um, live data, then you have to be very, very careful of that, yeah? Please do educate and engage the employees because uh, for the success of automation, you know, it is supposed to help the, uh, the, the, the colleagues and the employees. So make them feel that they are still treasured, but they are, we, you are just trying to help them to, you know, improve the, um, the efficiency and improve the work experience. Because I don't think anybody wants to stay back in the office late into the night, you know, it's like uh, to be doing, you know, administrative tasks that can be automated, uh, yeah. So definitely not a magic one. So it's like uh, it won't be uh, solving uh, all your problems. So I would say that uh, even if it helps you to, you know, say for example, um, 
resolve say 70%, 80% of the work, then it is still worth considering. Yeah, but just that it won't be a magic wand. Yeah, don't be too ambitious at the beginning though, because um, we, we are not here to save the world or transform the whole industry, but we want to start small steps, you know, and then scale up. Because if you can't feel that success, then the journey will become very tiring. So I would suggest that uh, um, start with small steps, do small projects, feel the success, and then after that, we will scale up. Otherwise, it might become too overwhelming. Yeah, don't leave it to chance. Uh, you know, it, and then the other thing is that uh, don't don't leave it for, um, to one or two persons then um, uh, to 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 be taking care of that whole thing. And when the person leaves, there's no if there's no handover or there's no continuity, then the whole project will be you know I would say wasted or you know it would have been um, quite quite pity like, if it doesn't go on. Yeah. Okay. So with that, that is the end of my sharing. I, um, we have got a special guest, Miss Melissa Ong, uh, who will be joining us. Um, but I, let me check whether Melissa is in. In the meantime, maybe we can take some questions. Perhaps we have five minutes to take some questions. Over to you, Liana. Hi, Ada. I think there is one question. The uh, someone is asking. Uh, Peng is asking if you can actually uh, share some the share the presentation slides after this. Yeah, we will be sharing the recording, right? So from there, he can actually view the uh, slides also. Okay. Okay. Sure. Um. So yeah. we're waiting for um Michelle to come in. Oh, Melissa, <clears throat> yeah. hey, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. We're waiting for Melissa to come in. <laughs> Um, uh, there's a question that I would like to pose to uh, Edda. So uh, one of the reservations that um, businesses have um, about the implementation of AI and RPA is the monetary expense associated uh, with it. So uh, most organizations consider the cost associated in um, to the associated to digital transformation to be high is often you know uh, out of uh, standard company budgets. So with this uh, AI and RPA, is this the case? Um, thanks, Liana, for the in, uh, for the questions and inputs. Yeah, that's an interesting point. I will say just now, as I mentioned, you know, go for something that suits your budget. That's something that suits your you know your organization as well. So let's say, for example, yeah, of course, you might be thinking that, uh, hey, uh, is it going to be a million dollar project? Definitely not. Lah, yeah. So it is going to be something that, as I mentioned, start small. You, know, you can actually um, try to define a scope, a project scope that is something that you can manage. Maybe you can even say that uh, you may want to try it out on your own so that uh, if you see some success, then perhaps you can engage the services of professionals. Or if you think that uh, hey, maybe you know, your in-house team can actually learn how to use it, then it's going to be also be something that uh, very economical. We have customers who actually uh, get just the software and uh, they get training and then they try to you know, like, uh, uh, get some help from us and they are able to set up some of the automation projects. So very proud of that, yeah. So yeah, budget is, it's really up to the users. Uh, so they will have to define, you know, hey, what is the use, uh, what are the potential benefits. So definitely I would recommend doing um, um, ROI reviews and returns on investment. Let's say that, uh, for example, you, the software and the services, uh, uh, say for example, cost X amount of dollars, then with your savings, so one thing is the savings, okay, and then the other thing is that uh, extra value created because of the automation, worth the money spent on the automation. So if you spend $100 on automation, but you can actually save, you know, like say maybe $100 on the, on, on the task and another maybe you can even generate $100 of extra revenue because of the automation then that could be something that, uh, you know, uh, you can consider because the ROI is already 200%. Yeah. Hi, uh, Edna, uh, Liana, sorry, I, this is Jerry. I've got a question. Can I, uh, can I? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. So uh, very quickly, actually, one of your slides actually uh, mentioned something uh, or indicated a system to another system transfer of data. Mm -hmm. So typically, uh, Glimatic does is uh, it basically transfers from an Excel file into a, a system. So I, I was wondering when, when you were talking about this system to system, 
uh, are we only looking at from uh, the system of my, my system into another system or can it also work vice versa? Yeah, it can work anyway in any direction. So uh, what you're saying is actually, let's say if I, I were to, uh, to lock in, say for example, to another uh, service provider portal, and I needed some information to, from the service provider on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So uh, are we able, are you saying that we are able to uh, calibrate something like that? Yes. So long as you give the instructions yes. to the bot on yes. how to assess yes. uh, which fields to pick up and then yes. where to put it into. Yeah, you can do that. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Thank you. So it, it's, it's just mimicking your activities. Like when you show the robot, then the robot will learn. <laughs> which, which actually is also uh, quite challenging sometimes because, uh, okay, the, the question now is really about cybersecurity. Eh? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So certain systems, of course, you know, uh, they want to check whether, you want to confirm whether you are a robot or not that's locking in. So in this instance, how does Climatic uh, then mitigate this? Okay, yeah, so the... Um, that's a great question. So if there are sites which are blocking, so-called yeah. blocking the robots, yeah. then you have to go in the human way, you know, like for example, oh, um, yeah, you uh, as a human will have to clear the so-called obstacle first to so-called um, verify. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. The limitation there. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. But we can actually, uh, if, if there are sites that you can actually lock in and then, yeah. you know, let's take a box that says, I am not a bot, then we can yeah. still do that. <laughs> ah, okay. All right. Oh, that's yeah. very useful. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tan. Any other questions? If not, uh, maybe we can go for a short break. Um, I, I actually, uh, Melissa is already in. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. she's already online. Yeah, I, because I don't see her name. Okay. Melissa, would you like to share? Would you like to share about... Uh, hi, Melissa, are you ready? Hello. Hi. Hi, can you all hear me? Yeah, but we cannot see you. <laughs> Melissa, we can hear you. Melissa, but now I can't hear you again. Just now we could hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, Hello? Now, can, now can hear yeah. you. Yeah, okay. So actually just want to share my experience uh, with how the RPA system has actually uh, benefited our company. Yeah, so we are now uh, using the system uh, more for like the uh, uh, verification of our invoices uh, bank reconciliation and uh, we are also doing it more for like uh, reporting purposes also so uh, it's definitely very uh, useful because it will also free up uh, time for like uh, other things that we can actually um, could not have done before and then now with all the mundane things that like copy and paste you know checking verification all these can be done by the robotic side so in that sense yes help us on uh you know our business lah. great thank you so much melissa yeah so Melissa's team is also very brave to be learning how to use the tool as well. So Melissa's staff are actually, you know, even though they are account staff, they are operation staff, they are, they actually say, hey, you know, uh, <laughs> let me learn about all these things and, you know, very proud of them that they are actually learning alongside my colleagues. For that. Thank you, Melissa, for your support. Yeah. Um, Any? Yeah. Hi, Ashley. Yeah. Hi, and I think there is one more question. Um, by Erica. Uh, can you please explain more about your pricing structure? Oh, okay. Yeah. Thanks, Niana. Yeah. So for the pricing structure, I mean that we have uh, um, the software component and then the service component. Yeah. So basically for the software, it's on a, I would say, a subscription model whereby we go by annual subscription. Okay. As for the services-wise, 
uh, it will really depend on, you know, it's like uh, what is the scope of the services that uh, you want to do? Let's say, for example, for Melissa's team, we scope out that, okay, this process is going to take, uh, say, X number of men days, another process will take two X men days, etc. Then we will scope out. Oh, yes, and another thing is that uh, Melissa can also uh, vouch that uh, you can get government funding. Yay! <laughs> so this is something that you can actually, you know, it's like uh, uh, the government is very encouraging of automation. Uh, Adam, can you session. perhaps share what type of funding do they actually receive? Okay, Melissa, uh, maybe correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, it's a uh, uh, EDG funding, right? Uh, sorry, CDG funding, correct? Um, from Enterprise Singapore. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not sure if Melissa heard me. It's actually from the Enterprise Singapore, so it's a capability development grant uh, that uh, Melissa's team got. Yeah. Okay, there's another one. Uh, there's another question. Uh, what is the accuracy of using bots or robotic process? Okay, yeah. So accuracy-wise, right, if you are talking about data transfer, if it is digital data, just now as I've mentioned, um, you know, from Excel files or from systems, etc., then it could be close to 100%. Or in fact, it's 100%. Now. The only thing is that uh, if you have got, uh, say, for example, you know, information from um, scan documents or paper documents that you want to recognize from images, etc. Then the accuracy we will have to go through another step, which is actually uh, trying to convert the image into digital data through a process for OCR, optical character recognition. Then from that process might introduce a little bit of uh, inaccuracies because when you print and then there could be you know dots on the printing you know there could be the paper is crumpled etc or it's a little blurred etc then it might be the, uh, the accuracy might be compromised uh, yeah so for our what, what we are having is that uh, you know it's like uh, um, if you want to start I would suggest that you can start with processes that involve structured digital data like uh, data from, say, your spreadsheets or from your systems, your ERP systems, etc. So, like what Mr. Jerry Tan asked, you know, that it can it from system A to B or is it B to A? Either way is fine. Yeah. Okay, hope that answers the question. Okay, thanks, Ada. Actually, I can also vouch for the accuracy part because for SLA, we actually do, um, uh, the point the data extraction from point from a to b and um as compared to a manual manual and uh manual sending out of emails um the use of bots actually um allows more accuracy because it is followed it is following exactly to the very detail of um extraction from a to b so um mistakes are generally um low so so far we have uh using a bot we have not made any mistakes yet lah. um there's one more question um by alex uh i'm on glamatic glimatic website now but not able to locate the subscription fees and service fee um please assist uh, yeah. yeah thanks alex for the question yeah so uh basically we are i mean we are like the i would say a carpenter like the renovation contractor etc so it's like you know um the fees will really depends on how complex your project is how pro complex your process is let's say for example you ask a carpenter to build a, a make you a foot stool you know a foot stool is very simple right it requires very little um, materials and very little time to make then that could be a lot cheaper than say giving you a wardrobe or a cabinet yeah so I think it, it, it really varies from time to time uh, and process to process and uh, we can definitely discuss yeah so okay yeah so um I think yeah Alex you're saying that the fees as low as okay I will say that uh, if you are if you are actually if you are actually looking at just uh, the software alone right the um the fees could be ranging um can be going as low as even like maybe say about a few hundred a month because you, you can't hire a human you know like uh, just at a few hundred a month uh, even for our low cost low labor cost countries right they, they can't be the the humans can't be working three shifts but this robot can work without needing sleep without needing food without needing a break uh, so that's the benefit of having a bot yeah Okay, another question. Uh, another question. 
um, is from uh, Sunny. Um, how can this help a logistic firm exactly, as in apart from data transformation? Yeah, so data transformation is a generic term. It can be applied for many, you know, it's like, a, um, I would say many processes. So we have had logistics customers who actually, okay, uh, let me share with you about one um, customer who is doing a land transport. Okay, so what they have to do is that uh, they, they have a fleet of trucks and then uh, they need to transport uh, the, the goods to um, a destination, right? Say, for example, they are transporting, say, maybe, you know, like a Coca-Cola to say NTUC fair price, and you need to update the Coca-Cola systems, and then uh, say for example, go and um, update and then build them, etc. So, um, so what what is happening is that let's say that you are ABC, you know, it's like a company, and then you 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 are you are getting your drivers to go and pick up the say for example Coca-Cola or Pepsi or you know whatever mm -hmm. or, or the 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 um, shampoo etc. from location and then to be sent to let's say for example the um, fair price supermarkets or giant or whatsoever so what this customer had to do was that uh, they had the information in their own erp system and then they need to say that uh, uh, okay give it to the give the information to the driver say okay these are the places that you need to go to and after the job is being completed they need to update the you know it's like the the customer which could be say coca-cola or um, the, the the shampoo manufacturer whosoever that okay your goods have been delivered to this abcd supermarkets you know at this time these are the quantities you know please make payment and uh, these are the terms, etc. So this could be one example of a use case. So just now, like what Melissa said, uh, we are doing a lot of automation for the um, the company in terms of the you know like order processing and uh, payments and receivables. Now. Yeah. So this could help to speed up a lot of the you know it's like uh, the, the the processes in terms of uh, payments and chasing money. You can get paid faster, etc. So, um, yeah, a lot of examples are some others to be that, you know, say, uh, for example, it could be even say, say it's like, uh, you know, inventory management, it's like uh, um, um, goods receiving. So basically this one is like a, a it's a 3PL. Then they say that uh, um, after they receive the goods, the, the people in the store are literally, I mean, okay, the accounting wise, uh, there could be different ways of doing accounting, but they find it, uh, um, you know, it's like uh, the goods receipt process, is, they say it's very painful because there's a lot of data to be entered. Then that's where the bot can also help you. Yeah. So I think uh, I think there's a follow up question um, from Sunny. A uh, bot can help generate invoice and notify customer automatically. Um, without the driver notifying, uh, well, I mean, at least we will still need the driver to notify. Uh, you know, if we don't know whether the driver has actually gone to the place or not, mm -hmm. the bot um, will not know what to do, right? So mm -hmm. basically, that could be you know um. That could be a way whereby you know that the drivers um, can update the system or update the person at the HQ. Say, okay, I've delivered the goods, and the uh, the bot can actually, um, so the bot can be triggered to actually generate the invoice and notify the customer. Yeah. So hope hope that answers your questions, Sandy. Yeah, there's one more on uh, there's one more by yes uh, how can i let your robot learn data pick up from hard copy document do we scan the documents into the pc yes correct yeah you you have to scan and then you know it's like a save it as an image and then tell the robot where to pick up the document let's say for example you save it to a desktop as a certain specific folder you just tell the bot to go to that folder and pick up the data from there so um, the climatic bot includes the OCR, optical character recognition, to go to the, you know, it's like an image and then um, digitize the data and pick it up. Okay, thank you. Okay, it seems like there's no other questions. So um, if the rest of you, um, if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to just uh, drop uh, to drop me uh, or drop me an email or you can also email to uh, Eda Lim. The details are there. Um, okay, yeah. so um, on Please, behalf uh, of... Please fill up the... Yeah. Sorry, Aliana. Uh, there's yeah. a, a feedback form also, yeah. 
Okay, okay. Oh, 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 yeah. Sorry. Okay. So, um, first of all, thank you to um Eda, um Jerry, as well as Melissa for your sharing. Um, for the rest of you, uh, thank you so much for staying till the end, um, and being very participative. Uh, we hope that you found this afternoon session very informative, very useful. Um, so as what Eda mentioned, um, please uh, complete the survey form. Um, if you. Uh, if you have any questions, um, just uh, you can just drop us an email. So we'll give ourselves about a few minutes to complete the form uh, before we end the session. Would that be okay? Thank you so much, Diana. Thank you to Mr. Mm. Jerry Tan also. Thanks to Melissa for your sharing. And thanks to everyone here for joining us this afternoon. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I'll leave this on for a while more. Thank you. <laughs>